In this video, I'm going to show the complete build process for a crystal power cell, as well as voltage and amperage readings from completed cells, and the cells running a few small devices. Backroom Labs guys. So today we are going to be making some crystal batteries. Uh, these are going to be the materials that you're going to need to be able to replicate this. You will need some borax, alum. I got this off of eBay. It was four pounds for about 18 bucks. You're gonna need a drill with some drill bits, some jumpers. This is some thermostat wire. You're going to need a multimeter that will read DC current. You're going to need some sandpaper. Magnesium. This was from Gallium Source. I got 10. It's 5 8 thick uh, by 3 and 5 8 long. You're going to need some stainless steel screws and nuts. You're going to need some iron pyrite. Fool's gold. You're going to need some terminal ends. And then some 3 quarter inch copper. Now in previous videos you had seen where I had made larger ones like this, um, but I did some experimenting and tried using some smaller diameter copper. Uh, the batteries are harder to make, uh, getting the alum in between the magnesium and copper is a lot harder, but the end result is a uh, higher output cell. What we're going to do first is take our 3 quarter inch copper that I've cut to length, I have 10 of these and I'm going to sand them inside and out to get them all cleaned up. Once I get that done, I'm going to do that to all 10 of them and then I'll show you the next step. I got everything sanded. The next step is to drill the hole in the top of the copper pipe here. I'm going to take my drill and then I'm going to drill the hole as close to the top of the pipe as I can get it um, and I'll show you what the reason for that is here in just a moment. I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole in each of the pipes and then we'll go to the next step. The next step is to turn the copper into a semiconductor. The way we do that is we will heat the copper with a torch and then once it is hot we will dip it in a solution of borax and water. You mix the water and borax together and let all the borax dissolve and after the copper is heated you'll dip it in there cool it off and heat it a second time, dip it in there and cool it off and what you will have is this reddish color, salmon color and that is corpus copper. So I'm going to do that to the remaining ones here and then we'll go to the next step. What we do next is take all of the magnesium rods, sand those down real good and then drill a hole in each one of them so it will accept one of the screws that you, that you got and then what we're going to do is use the wire terminal and prep a piece of the thermostat wire and we will attach it. So we'll put the uh, terminal end on, screw it down and then use the nut to tighten everything together and that will be your negative connection. So I'm going to do that to all of these and then I'll be back for the next step. Alright so here's all of the magnesiums are done. And, and I went ahead and did all of the coppers. Earlier when I said make sure your hole is as close to the top as possible, um, depending on how long of a screw you get, it makes it a lot easier if it's real close to the top. The next step, we are going to take some of the iron pyrite. I'm going to file a good bit of that down and I'll show you how much I'm going to add to the mix. I'm going to do this enough to about cover a quarter cup of alu and then I'm going to put all that in the blender. Alright, so next, once this came out of the blender, it's a lot finer, it's well mixed, and we are going to go ahead and fill the cells up. So here are a couple of the completed ones I've been doing some tests on. Uh, next portion here, I'm going to do a little clip and show you 
from the grinding of the alum and iron pyrite in the blender through the build process actually how to put it all together. Here we have the mix of the alum and iron pyrite. Now I got it in here, put it on the blender. Okay. That makes it fine enough to be able to go in between the magnesium and the copper. Come over here to the table. We have our copper, magnesium. I found I take four little pieces of thermostat wire and it helps keep the magnesium centered in here until I get some crystals in it and then I can remove them. And I found you just kind of spoon it in here a little at a time until you get it all filled up. I have two cells here for comparison. The first cell is strictly alum with no iron pyrite and the copper hasn't been fired. This one here is fired copper and the iron pyrite mix. Standing voltage on the non-fired one is 1.65. Move the leads over to the other cell, the fired cell with the iron pyrite. You can see the voltage is higher, 1.83. Next, I'm going to do short circuit current. All right, I'll hook the lead up here and see what kind of reading we get. And now the iron pyrite cell for current. The doping of the cell with the iron pyrite allows for a significant increase in current. These cells were both made yesterday and I've been playing with them today. I've had them running this little fan here and I left them on all night running a Jewel Thief circuit and was running some LED lights and playing with them. So the next thing I'm going to do is take one of the fresh shells here that we made and I'm going to add about 10 to 15 drops of water to either side to get it nice and moist and then we'll show voltage and current reading of a brand new one. So you can see here this one holds a lot better. As the cell's under direct short, it converts a lot of the water into hydrogen and oxygen. That conversion of the water from splitting the water from its normal form into its separate form, hydrogen and oxygen, is how it actually creates power. Here is the brand new cell. Voltage of almost 2 volts, 1.98. That is phenomenal. The reason these other cells here weren't quite that high of voltage is I have flooded them with water all day and been messing with them. If I leave them out overnight and add a few drops of water tomorrow morning, those will have the same voltage as this here. Um, the reason I say that is because I did it this morning and that's what it was. So next we will do a direct short on this. This meter has a 200 milliamp scale and then I can go to 10 amps. Now the other cells when I did this had overloaded, so let's see if this one is the same, and we'll have to switch it to the next scale. 
overload. Okay, so that means we got more than 200 milliamps. I moved the lead to the 10 amp scale. And we need to switch the meter to that. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and plug her up here and see what we get. So that's 380 milliamps. We can say 0.4. That's almost half an amp. A strong third of an amp right there. Let's see what we can actually do with that power. This is one of my little jewel thief circuits. If you watch some of my other videos, you'll see how these are made and what they are and how they work. But basically this will take the low voltage, the 2 volts, 1.9 volts, and spike it up enough to light a 3 volt LED. Let's see if we can get these going. And voila. That is extremely bright. If you looked at it, you'll be seeing spots for five minutes. Let's see what else we can do with this one cell. So this is a little fan that I got from the dollar store. It's supposed to run on three double or triple A batteries in series. But let's see what we can do with one crystal power cell. You can actually feel it moving air. So here's nine of them completed. The tenth one here, I got to uh, fire that copper, get rid of the straight alum mix, and use the uh, mix that's doped with the iron pyrite. Finish that cell and once that's done we can do them, link them all together and I want to do a parallel for all of them and see what kind of current we can get. I'm sure I should be close somewhere around an amp and a half. Um, and then we'll string them all in series, see what type of uh, voltage we can get and then uh, check current while they're in that formation also. Uh, so Probably tomorrow, after I go home from work, I will finish that video set, and then we'll get all this posted. So, it is the next evening, and I have the ten cells here. I have five in parallel, and another five in parallel. And they haven't been watered since yesterday, early afternoon, and our standing voltage is 1.65. I am going to go ahead and water these, and give them just a moment, and then we'll check the voltage after that. So it's been about three minutes or so, and we're up to 1.84 on this set, and on this other set here, let's switch these leads over. Also 1.84. Now, let me go ahead and move this to the 10 amp scale, so we can do short circuit current on five cells in parallel five crystal power cells, 10 amp scale, get all this in view here, when I first connected it that spiked up to 700 milliamps, it's almost an amp, but under a current hold of a dead short 0.6 is looking pretty good. So over half an amp. Let's see what the other set looks like. Alright, here comes the other set. Not quite as strong on that set. Still half an amp. All the cells are linked together in parallel now. I have two positive leads going in between them and two negative leads going in between them. And then my two leads for positive and negative coming back to the meter. And all together, we have a voltage of 1.84. Move the meter to the 10 amp scale. Everything's still in parallel. And 
Jones. We'll go ahead and hook her up and see what we get. Point nine nine, almost a full amp. Let's see what she's going to level out at here. I don't know if the camera's going to focus right, but they're bubbling. Pretty much holding steady there at three fifths of an amp. Been under a dead short now for almost 45 seconds. Oh, there you go. You can see them bubbling now. Just hydrogen and oxygen. Those are holding pretty steady there. Alright, now we're going to link them all in series and see what our max voltage is. All 10 cells in series. We're sitting at 1797, so basically 18 volts. And see what the short circuit current of that is. All 10 cells in series. I have the meter set for the 200 milliamp scale. Let's see what we get here. Spike to 180. Let's see what this level's out at. Doesn't leveled off yet. It's looking like we should be right around 100 milliamps, which is good because as you put these in series, the resistance gets higher and higher between each cell. So there you have it. One amp crystal battery power. So the next step is going to be ordering the graphene coated on the aluminum to make the supercapacitors. And then we'll be able to power some, some real equipment. But you can see now already, lights off in the room, it's completely dark. But this will light up just about anything. So, thanks for watching. Remember, like, comment, and subscribe.